adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowlful, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk, and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. vacation from college, Dan Reed, the nephew of the Lone Ranger, joined the masked man and Toto. The three were camped in southern Texas when Dan rode to the town of Fairville for supplies. On the return trip, Dan struck up an acquaintance with a stranger at a water hole. The two were discussing an old handbill which had fallen from Dan's pocket. The stranger was saying, yeah, I remember when Feeney was caught and convicted. I felt sorry for the little critter. He's only about half my size, and he sure looked helpless in the courtroom. I didn't think he was guilty of robbing that stagecoach. Have you uh, seen him since he was released from prison? No. You looking for him? No. No, but I think the sheriff may be. Why? Well, he thinks Feeney may have hidden the stolen cash and bonds before he was captured. May try to get the loot now that he's free. He aims to catch him when he does, hmm? Perhaps I shouldn't say any more. May I have that handbill? Yeah, here. Thanks. I'd better be going. Adios. Bye. Easy, fella. Come on, Victor. Lucky I met him. I got something to tell Jake. Easy, boy. Get up! Lefty Drake, the man to whom Dan had talked rode to a woodland camp where he joined Jake Feeney. The diminutive stage driver listened to the account of the meeting, then said, Did you get the name of the young gent? No. The names of his friends? Nope. He clammed up when I started asking questions. <laughs> now we'll have to be more careful than ever. As if I didn't already have a tough problem. Jake, you might stay in hiding. Let me go get the cash and bonds. Well, you think I trust you to go alone? You'd probably run out on me as soon as you got the loot. I wouldn't do that, Jake. I proved I'm your friend and pal. Didn't I pull the strings to get your parole? You did that for a share of the cash and uh, bonds. Even if I was willing to trust you. Couldn't get the stuff without my help. It's going to be downright ticklish job. Why? I hid the cash and bonds in the cellar of an abandoned building. Well, can't we just go there and get it? No. 
Place is occupied now. Oh. When the new stage line opened up, the route went right past the building. It made a good stage stop. Man and his wife fixed up the building and started the Red Rock Trading Post. I know the place. There's a settlement of Cardo Indians a few miles east of it and a Comanche village a few miles to the west. Yeah, that's right. A couple named Hank and Molly Hawkins run it. So why can't we gun Hawkins and his wife? You fool. The murders will be discovered as soon as the next stage stop there. The law would soon put two and two together and figure I'd done the killing. I'd be hunted down all over again. Yeah. Both the Cardos and Comanches are peaceful. They haven't even got firearms. So we can't make it look like the Indians killed the couple. Lefty, my plans are all made. I spent a lot of time working them out while I was in prison. Yeah? We'll stir up the Redskins. Get the Cardos mad at the Comanches and vice versa. Get them fighting. <laughs> that followed, the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Dan Reed covered much of the area between the prison where Feeney had served time and the Red Rock trading post miles to the west. The handbill was shown to storekeepers and other townspeople in many communities, but no one had seen Jake Feeney. Then one night, when the three were camped a few miles from the trading post, the masked man said, Dan, we're within a couple of miles of the trading post. You go there with the handbill tomorrow and make inquiries. Yes, sir. Oh, and by the way... Yes? A man I talked to in the last town suggested that we ask the Indians about Phoenix. He said there are two settlements near here. There are. But I doubt that either the Cardos or the Comanches would have seen Feeney. They rarely leave their villages. Kimasabi. Yes, Toto? Chief Thundercloud camped 10, 12 miles north of Creighton Post. Thundercloud, our old friend? Ah. And me talk to Indian hunter... Him from Thundercloud tribe. Well, what's Thundercloud doing in this part of the country? Well, him look for place where they're good hunting. Oh. His men cover plenty ground. Maybe one of them see Feeney. All right, we'll visit Thundercloud tomorrow while Dan goes to the trading post. Not good. Do you want me to meet you here in camp? Yes, Dan. We'll meet here. The following morning, Dan Reed went to the trading post, introduced himself to Hank Hawkins and his wife. Then showed them the handbill. Height about five feet one inch, weighed about 100 pounds. <laughs> Jake Feeney's a little critter, isn't he, eh? Yes, Mr. Hawkins. Well, we haven't seen anyone matching this description, have we, Molly? No, but that name Feeney is familiar. Yeah, so it is. Jake Feeney. Say, I remember. Hmm? The Comanches told us about him. He's that little critter who's been living in the Comanche village since a few days ago. Why, that's right. Yeah. Jake Feeney living with the Comanches? Yes, Sam. There's one of the Comanches outside right now. Yeah. Sure, he's coming in. Aren't you going to see what he wants? No, I didn't know what he wants. He wants to buy rifles. But he knows we're not allowed to sell firearms to the engines. Yeah. He's looking at that rack of rifles on the wall. Yes, counting them. If he finds that some are gone, he'll probably suspect we sold them to the Cardos. Now, I'm afraid to sell them to anybody. You see, Dan, there's a Cardo tribe living a few miles to the east, and Comanches living about the same distance to our west. Yes, I know that. Well, the engine's satisfied. Now he'll get back to his tribe. You know, I don't blame him for being worried. If the two tribes start fighting, a dozen rifles would mean the difference between victory and defeat. Why should they start fighting? I thought both tribes were peaceful. Well, they were, until the past few days. What happened? Well, there's been thieving going on. We get the same story from both sides. The Cardos claim the Comanches are stealing from them. And the Comanches accuse the Cardos of stealing food, buffalo robes, blankets, and the like. Uh, Does either side have proof against the other? Well, sir, one of the Comanches told us that Feeney showed them proof that the Cardos are thieves. I tell you, Dan, both tribes are getting madder and madder. There might be an outbreak. That would be bad. Yeah. It'd be frightful. Why, both sides would want our rifles. And whichever side got here first would probably help themselves. Yep, and the other side would be sore at us. They'd blame us for letting the rifles go. And they'd be on the war path. They'd probably murder us. Another Indian. Yeah. Now, that one's a Cardo. See him counting the rifles? 
just like the Comanche did. Oh, I wish I knew what we could do. One of my friends might have a suggestion. They understand Indians. <laughs> see, Wally, there's another Kato outside. Yes, I see him, Hank. He rode up mighty fast. <laughs> He's telling the other engine something. He seems mighty excited. Both those Indians are excited. Something must have happened. And I'm going to try to find out what it is. Say there, boys. What's all the excitement? What happened? Plenty of trouble. Maybe mean war. War? Comanche want war. Them steal food, steal other things. Oh, now take it easy. The Comanches are saying the same things about you. Comanche lie. I do not steal. Comanche try to start war, steal many things, now steal son of Cato Chief. What? what? You mean to say the Comanches captured the chief's son? That's right. Son of Chief go hunting. Him captured, carried away by Comanche. What, what are you going to do about it? Chief want all the tribe together, hold council, decide what do. Maybe tonight we start war dancing. Oh, my sakes alive. If there war, we come here, take rifles. Now, now listen, neither of you can have the rifles. That'd be no good to you. You wouldn't know how to use them. We learn. White friend show us. Who'd show you? White man. Him come live in Cato village. You mean to say there's a white man living with your people? Ah, uh, him show chief plenty magic. Him make plenty good medicine. I'd better tell my friends about this. All right, Dan. Hurry. Maybe they can help. <laughs> come on, Victor. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Well, all over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question, and here's one the have that happy people have to face. Weeding, oh, weeding, and the do, 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 and okay, okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do, 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 and I'll be okay. Now to continue. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto finished their meeting with Chief Thundercloud and started south toward their camp. They had ridden but a short distance when they saw Dan Reed approaching. Oh, 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 oh. Dan was supposed to wait for us in camp, Toto. I wonder why he came all this way. Him way. You look excited. Oh, 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 oh steady, boys. I've got a lot to tell you. Dan, what's wrong? There may be war between the Cados and the Comanches. But those are peaceful Indians. They're not peaceful now. There's been trouble brewing for the past week. Each tribe thinks the other is stealing food and other things. And both tribes have tried to get the stock of rifles from the trading post. Them Indians not know how to use rifles. Wait, let me tell you. Jake Feeney is living with the Comanches. What? Feeney with the Comanches? Yes, sir. He'd show the Indians how to use rifles. And there's another white man in the Cado village. While I was at the trading post, word came in that the Comanches had captured the son of the Cado chief. That means plenty of trouble. The Cados are holding a council meeting. They may start their war dance tonight. I wonder if Jake Feeney had a hand in the capture of the chief's son. I don't know that, sir. Feeney, no. Thing like that start plenty of trouble. So do the people in the trading post. They're scared. Scared? Yes, sir. They think the Indians will attack their place to get rifles and ammunition. They're probably right. Yeah, they're afraid the Indians will kill them. Kimasabi. Yes. You think... Feeney hides stolen money in trading post building? Many lawmen believe so. Feeney can't have free access to the trading post while the trader and his wife are there. But if the Indians raided, massacred... Then Feeney would go to the trading post and recover the cash and bonds he hid. Ah. And what we do? We must protect the trading post. Follow me. We're going back to Chief Thundercloud. For what? For his help. Come on, Senator! Come on, Come on Victor! <laughs> That night, Jake Feeney sneaked away from the Comanche village and hurried toward a cave a short distance south of the trading post. 
It was a rendezvous where Feeney and Drake had met in secret every night since the beginning of their efforts to incite the Indians. Oh, 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 oh. Easy. Come on, boy. Come on. When Feeney reached the candlelit cave, he found Drake waiting and saw an Indian about 20 years old lying on the floor, tied hand and foot. Drake said, Look who I brought here, Feeney. Who's he? The son of the Cato chief. Great Scott. How he did... and I went hunting together this morning. I watched for the chance, then slugged him on the head and brought him here. Well, but why'd you do that? We weren't getting anywhere by stealing grub and things of that sort. I had the Comanches convinced that the Cados were doing the stealing, and you said... I know I told you I'd stolen lots of things from the Cados, and I'd convinced them that the thieving was done by sneaking Comanches. But we weren't getting anywhere, Jake. So... Captured the chief's son. Yeah, brought him here this morning. Left him tied and gagged and went back to the Cado village. I told the chief we'd been attacked by Comanches. Told him Comanches had captured his son. Well, if this don't start the Cados on the warpath, nothing will. They'll go on the warpath, all right. They were holding their council meeting when I left the village. They'd been discussing their plans all afternoon. They'll decide to go on the warpath, and they'll rush to the trading post for the rifles. And they'll probably wreck the place. They may even kill the trader and his wife. They don't, we will. And the Cados will be blamed for it. Right. And while they're fighting the Comanches, we'll get the hidden loot. What'll we do with this engine? We can't let him live. He knows too much. Make sure he can't get loose. And leave him here until after we've got the cash and bonds. And what? Then we'll take him somewhere near the Comanche village and knife him. Good idea. <laughs> By that time, the Cados and Comanches will be fighting hammer and tong. Hey, listen. Do you hear that? <laughs> War cries. Sounds like the attack on the trading post has started. All we gotta do is sit tight until it's quiet near the trading post, and then move in. The war cries struck terror to the hearts of Hank and Molly Hawkins. They sat in the trading post listening to the shouts that came nearer and nearer. Then suddenly the door was opened. Please don't be frightened. A mask. Dan Reed told me of your problem. I'm here to help. But did... I see that your rifles are still in place. Yes. Then we're not too late. Can't you hear those war cries? The Indians are coming. Those Indians are friends of mine, led by Chief Thundercloud. I've asked them to come here, make a lot of noise, borrow your rifles, and fire them into the air. Huh? They'll not hurt anyone. But why are they coming here? To protect you. The other Indians may stay away if they think the rifles have been seized. You mean the Cados will think the Comanches have the rifles and vice versa? That's the idea. But what will those, those friends of yours do after they're through shooting? They'll withdraw and stay out of sight. Then we'll see what happens. Uh, I wish I knew I could trust you. Oh, here's Dan. Hello, Dan. I just caught up to you. Tell these good people that Thundercloud and I are on their side. Say, Dan, is this masked man the friend you spoke of? Yes, he is. He's the Lone Ranger. Sakes alive. And whatever he does, it's all right with us. Then listen to me. I'll tell you about a stagecoach robbery and loot that's never been found. A short time later, Chief Thundercloud and his men, accompanied by Toto, rode close to the trading post. Cries, shouts, and gunfire were heard by Jake and Lefty in the cave not far to the south. They got the rifles all right, Lefty. They seem to know how to use them. I'll just make sure once more that the chief's son can't get free. Then we'll go and get a fortune in cash and bottles. Jake and Lefty approached the trading post with caution. Oh, 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 oh. Mounted a short distance away, then advanced on foot. The building was dark. There seemed to be no sign of life. The door's wide open. I see it is. Chances are the trader and his wife are dead, but keep your gun handy just in case. I'm ready for trouble. I'll go in first. We need a light. Yeah, well, I'll strike a match. Here's a lantern. I'll light it and take it with us. The cash and the bombs. Where are they? In the cellar. Follow me. The stairs used to be right back here. Sure, Ruth. The loot's where you left it. Oh, here's the stairs. Careful now. It's going to a lot of trouble. It'd be a shame if someone else had found the loot. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. You see where I hid it. I'm following you, Jake. Keep going. 
Well, this is as far as we go, Lefty. Where is it? See this stone in the foundation? Yeah, what about it? Looks solid, but it's not. Huh? Here, hang the lantern on that hook near the ceiling. Right. Now, watch this stone. It's loose. There. There. There's my hiding place. Behind the stone. The bag's here. Good. Here we are. Uh, now I'll open it. There. That's what I've been waiting for. Now, don't move, Feeney. Uh, Lefty, put down the gun. Why should I let you have half the cash? Why, you double The cousin. Redskins might as well take the blame for your murder as well as the death of the traitor and his wife. Drop that gun. Hey, what? Help me. Why, you... No. You should have dropped the gun instead of trying to shoot it out. Get your hands up, Feeney. You're masked, Cool Pull the ropes, Toto. Uh, me got them. And me got hey, them. Where'd God. you come from? We were behind those boxes waiting for you to appear, Jake. Ah. Hank and Molly were with us. You bet we were. Hey, hey what? that's the man I talked to at the water hole. You! That's right. I told you my friends were looking for Jake Feeney. Well, I, I don't savvy. The Indians, we heard them. The Indians you heard are friends of ours. Oh, now listen. Drake's the crook. He captured the chief's son. Shut up, you little... I won't shut up. You're going to kill me. I'll fix you for that. Listen, mister. You'll find the chief's son tied and gagged in a cave south of here. Drake's the one who captured him. Why, you... Don't... Uh, you hold no. a little while, me... I wrote. When the chief's son tells his story, there'll be enough to hang you, Lefty. You're in this as deep as I am, Jake. You're both in trouble. How do I know that cave? I'll go and release the chief's son. He'll be able to rejoin his tribe and prevent the uprising. Isn't that good. Hank, when he's told his story and we're sure the threat of trouble is gone, Thundercloud will return the rifle. And I'm not worried about the rifles, but I'd like to know what's to be done with these crooks. Hold them until I return, Hank. Yeah? Then we'll take them and the stolen cash and bonds to the United States Marshal. And I'll see you later. You bet. Well, Dan, I've heard about that masked friend of yours, but I never expected to see him in the flesh. He's a mighty good friend to have. He sure is. Uh-huh. Who is that masked man? He's the enemy of your kind of poor cat, Feeney. He's the Lone Ranger. I will still Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.